Got a tasty brew, but no good way to open it. The Rockler bottle opener kit. <sighs> but no handle. <sighs> Perfect. Anytime I drill a hole, I like to use a dry lubricant on the drill bit. I've marked the centers on the blank. I'm going to mount it between the live center and the point on the drill bit. Then I'll bring the tool rest up, touching the blank, preventing it from rotating. Turn the speed of the lathe to about 500 RPMs. Turn the lathe on. As Soon as the bit starts the hole, what I like to do for a depth gauge, if you don't have markings on the quill of your tailstock, is I just take a Sharpie, make a mark there on the quill. And then as I drill, I can use that mark as a depth gauge. A little bit more. That should do it. Remove the blank. and the drill bit. To install the threaded insert into the blank, I've taken a three inch hex bolt and cut the head off of it with a hacksaw, then put two nuts as far down on the threads as they'll go and locked those together. I'm gonna go ahead and install that bolt in the Jacobs chuck and tighten that in place. Then I've just got a washer, has a three quarter inch OD and I happen to have a copper washer just in case I hit it with my tool, it won't dull it. Steel one might require a little bit of sharpening. Now I'm going to mount the blank between the insert and the live center. Going to bring the tool rest up again to prevent the blank from rotating. Now I'm going to place a wrench on one of the nuts, turn the threaded insert in, and advance the tailstock quill. This will ensure that the insert goes in straight. and requires very little effort. I'll make sure that the tailstock is tight. Lock that in place and then move the tool rest out of the way so that the blank can turn freely. We'll do the turning at about 1200 RPMs. Now I use a spindle roughing gouge to turn the blank round. <coughs> I 
Now for practice and to reduce sanding, you can use a skew chisel just to smooth up the cylinder. Now I'll mark my critical dimensions. First I'll use a parting tool to reduce the diameter here at the end. This is all waste. And I'll just take it down to the diameter of the tailstock. Now I'll make a parting cut for the neck. Just using a pair of calipers to an inch and five eighths. And last, part down for the top to an inch and an eighth. Now I'll use the spindle roughing gouge to remove most of the material and shape the neck. Working from large diameter to small. Then a skew chisel to create a V. Then I'll continue with the skew to refine the neck. I'll start up near the top. I can't work all the way into the corner, but just near the top.
And it may be necessary to touch up this side of the V. To check and make sure that the neck is straight, I like to use a small straight edge. Even a scrap of wood that straight works. That looks good. I'll continue with the skew here just to taper the top. Want it to finish up about 7 eighths of an inch in diameter since my washer is three quarters of an inch. I'm using that as a size gauge. I can stop the lathe, double check my measurement with calipers. One more cut. Now I switch to the spindle detail gouge to roll a couple of half beads, one right here, just rounding the corner over. A large one here, I use the pencil line as a starting point. Make it in a couple of passes. And then one at the bottom, again, using the pencil line, rolling to the bottom. And then to put a slight concavity in the bottom, I'll just continue with the spindle detail gouge. <coughs> I use the spindle detail gouge to pare down some of this waste material so I can finish turn the bottom as much as possible. Now at this point I like to go ahead and sand the entire piece before I create the label. That way I don't destroy the fine detail with the sandpaper. It's kind of like watching paint dry, folks. Then make sure to stop the lathe and sand the straight sections with the grain to eliminate cross grain scratches.
With the outside sanded, you can create the label. I'll make a pencil mark 5 eighths of an inch from the end. And four and an eighth inches from the bottom. Then I'll use the skew to create a small V, only about a 32nd of an inch deep here on each line. One cut down the middle. One little cut down each side. One cut down the middle. One on each side. <clears throat> then I'll make a planing cut with the skew to reduce the section in between the V's. Then just flip the tool over and work the other direction. Just as with the neck, you can use a small straight edge to ensure that it's straight. Now I'll just lightly sand the label area. And once again, stop the lathe and make sure and sand with the grain. Now with it sanded, I'll just work on removing the end. I won't do it completely on the lathe, but just remove some of the bulk of this waste with a parting tool. Then you can just break the end off. Just remove the blank from that little bolt mandrel. To finish off the bottom, I've got a small disc sander. I'll just mount that in the lathe. and easily sand away that excess. A little bit of hand sanding and it's ready for finish.